Hey, welcome back everybody. First of all, I want to apologize for it being such a long time since I've had a presentation. I'm dealing with uh, illness and having to get my car worked on and just the, the daily chores of living. But I'm back and I'm going to show you some more rock albums. Uh, once again, these are all over the place, but I hope you enjoy that. We're going to start off with a very unusual group that started in 1978 and I think disbanded in 1982, Human Sexual Response. They kind of remind me of the Cars a little bit with their sound. What's so unusual about this group is there are seven members of the band, four of which don't play instruments, they just sing. Well, one of them plays the tambourine, and then there's guitar, bass, and drums. But it's actually a pretty good record. I, I enjoy listening to it. It's kind of a new wave type of sound. Then we have a compilation. This is Apollo 100. It has some uh, musical compilations. I remember the song Joy and Telstar from back in the 60s, if you uh, recall that. This is on this compilation. It's from Great Britain. And we have, I think in 1971, we got to know The Grateful Dead. This is a really good album, and I love vertical gatefold albums. And it contains a lineup that features Bob Weir, Jerry Garcia, Pigpen, Bill and Phil. And I really enjoy this one. Now, I know I'm butchering the name of this album that I really like, but it's called Anamoxia. And um, what a long, strange trip it's been. It's a good album. It's a three-record set, live European tour. So check that out. A, a second album from um, Fairport Convention. This is Baba Kamba Lee. Their only conceptual album, second album, I think it came out in 1971. Really, really good stuff. Just very heavily coded in British Isles folk music. I really love this record. If you get a chance, you may want to check out Unhalf Brickling by the same group. This is an early offering from Linda Ronstadt. This is Silk Purse. For those of you who remember the song Long, Long Time, that's on here. That song's been covered by a lot of people. And a very unusual covering of this song, if you want to dare venture into easy listening, is Rod McEwen's version. It's really, it's, it's laughable, but I mean that in a good way. From 1991, we have Love Child, okay. I really love the alternative sound in the early days, like back in the early 90s. This is a really good record. I remember picking this up at a, a record store, not knowing what I was going to be getting into. But the cover was very intriguing, and uh, I listened to it, and I really enjoyed it. If you've ever heard of a group called Zeitgeist, which is now known as the Rivers, you will like this group as well. One of my favorite groups, very, very favorite, this is the first album by Sparks. Uh, I think uh, the group was known as Half Nelson at that time. The brothers Ron and Russell Mail uh, made up this group and still do to this day. This record was produced by Todd Rundgren. A very good record. Um, if you just want to listen to one song without committing yourself to listening to the whole album, there's a song in this called Fletcher on a Rabba. It is just a pure genius songwriting right there. Also, um, I like uh, big bands. That's a good song. Sparks, they kind of do the novelty rock, uh, but this is really one of the best records they've put out. Very familiar cover, great album, sung by Greg Lake, who has sor ah, sorely missed. This is in the court of the Crimson King, King Crimson. Uh, when I was little, this cover scared me to death. Uh, this is just spooky stuff, but you know, as I got older, I appreciated the artwork. Very well detailed. You can see the guy's uvula even. And here's another offering from uh, uh, King Crimson. And I kind of like this album a little bit better than the one I just showed you. This is In the Wake of Poseidon. It actually features some horns on the uh, second song of side one, which I did not see coming because I'm used to hearing the uh, acid-toned uh, electric guitars and stuff. But once again, Greg Lake's vocals really shines on this album. Coming up is another one of my favorite groups. This is the first album from Steely Dan, Can't Buy Thrill. I wish I had all of my Steely Dad albums together so I can show you uh, once, but one of the things I promise to do is to have every single Steely Dan recording and just kind of break down some of the music and some of the changes that they've made throughout the years. But there was two mega hits that came from this record. One is Reeling in the Years, and the other one is Do It Again. And for a while, those were the only two songs I listened to. But years later, I listened to the entire album, and I think it's worth a listen. It's just really, really good stuff. Uh, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker have also released solo albums. 
that you might want to check out, especially Donald Fagan's The Nightfly. Excellent. This is their, this one, that one came out in 72, this one came out in 74. So I think it's the third album. This is Pretzel Logic. Okay, two things I like about this album. First of all, is the cover. I spent a lot of time in New York City, and uh, the, uh, the pretzel vendor here is something that I really enjoy as the cover. The song Pretzel Logic is really terrific, uh, with the gun, Charlie Freak. Any major dude would tell you. And um, the, the big hit from this was Ricky Don't Lose That Number with the spooky marimba solo at the beginning. One of the songs of this is, most, is very interesting in that Steely Dan has never done a cover song. I think they've only done original material. But on this record, East St. Louis Toodaloo was written by Duke Ellington. The guitar player on this album is a genius because he makes the guitar sound like a muted trumpet. you got to check it out. Really great stuff. By the way, shout out to my brother Adam B. Hugh behind the camera. Say hi. Hello. Thanks for all your hard work. Brother. Oh, no problem, man. Okay. Uh, cheap trick. It's okay. It's it's it's, it's fun album. Um, my brother and I used to kid around that these guys look like a father and son, father and son team. Instead of going on fishing trips, decide to make rock music. Uh, this album is okay. It's got surrender on it. But you know something? My favorite. Uh, cheap Trick album is the live album, Live at Budokan. Usually people don't say that. They say the eh, live album's okay, but that was really the pinnacle, I think, of their, their success. And uh, they have a version of uh, Surrender and uh, I Want You to Want Me, and it's just, it's really good listening. 1967, the same year that Sgt. Pepper's released their masterpiece, the Rolling Stones released theirs. This is uh, the Satanic Majesty's Request. So, how do you compare? this album to Sgt. Pepper's. The truth is you don't. I'm not going to use the cliche apples and oranges, it's more like pears and tangerines, but they're both good in their own way. When I was very young, in our neighborhood, we had a lot of hippies living there, and I didn't know the song Citadel was what I was listening to, but I loved it. My dad came running out of the house and he said, I'm tired of those hippies walking around with no shirts and no shoes playing that god awful music. And because of his parental assertion, I fell in love with hippie music. And I said to myself, first time I get a phonograph, I'm going to buy all the hippie music I can. It wasn't until decades later that I discovered that song was on this album. A song so good that it stuck with me through all these years. Also on here is um, Sing This All Together. It's a great song. And the masterful 2,000 Light Years From Home. Got to check it out. Another great album. Uh, this is Midnight Oil's Diesel and Dust. Very socially and politically charged album. They make no bones about their beliefs, but most importantly, some of the great, greatest songs of the 80s are on this album. In fact, Rolling Stones did a poll, um, the greatest albums of the 80s. This came in 13. I mean, come on, up there with the Clashes, London Calling. I mean, this is really high marks, but deservedly so. The song, The Dead Heart, is not only one of the best songs on the album, but probably one of the best songs ever written. So check this one out, uh, Midnight Oils, Diesel and Dust. It inspired me to want to go to Australia, which I eventually did go to. Here's the Violent Femmes' first album. They did something very bold. They used acoustic guitar, acoustic bass, and drums. No plugins, but it's a terrific record. Everyone's familiar with the song A Blister in the Sun. Uh, the Violent Femmes have put out some really great records. Um, Hollowed Ground is probably my favorite album, and when I dig that up, I'll show it to you. Coming up, a little deviation is uh, Nancy Sinatra's Country My Way. Um, famous father, famous brother, but in her own right, a good singer. Everyone's heard the song Boots. Well, this is the young lady who, get, who put that out. And that Rolling, Rolling Stones poll I just mentioned earlier, this album came in at 81. So high marks for this one. This is uh, Jackson Brown's Lives in the Balance. I still think World in Motion is a better album, but with continued listening, this one here grows on me. But if you like Jackson Brown, I would suggest you listen to Lives in the Balance. Gino Videlli, Storm My Sun Up. This is one of the albums of his that I don't listen to very much, but I'll get around to it. But uh, Popular in Paradise is the really good one. Very unusual group, Robin Gristle's Greatest Hits. A lot of uh, back, good backstory there. We have the Guess Who.
And to finish up, this is Michael Honing, except one. Believe it or not, have not listened to this record yet. Uh, bought it at a uh, bought it at, uh, Spectrum Sound here in Wichita, Kansas. I like to say hi to those guys. The greatest record store in the world. So there you go. This is rock music. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming by. I'll have another rock presentation, and then I'll have two jazz presentations, and then I'll have a special treat for you, which I will announce later. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, and everyone have a good day.